I'm standing in front of the massive Warner Brothers production facility here in Burbank, California. It was the Warner Brothers Studios that Madonna made her big budget feature film debut in the Walt Disney production of Dick Tracy, in which she played Breathless Mahoney. This film is noted for having one of the biggest publicity blitzes in media history. Part of this publicity blitz was Madonna's very public affair with the movie's star and director, Warren Beatty. Madonna and Warren had been dating during the making of the film, causing many to speculate that the longtime bachelor Beatty was about to kiss his single life goodbye. And almost as soon as the film was in the can, so was their love affair. During the film's production, however, Madonna talked about her romance with Beatty at appropriate moments, such as whenever anybody asked her about it. Beatty, on the other hand, remained characteristically mum about the whole thing. Warren is renowned as a man who keeps his private life private. I know you're worthy of a better question than that, and I'm gonna... And while Dick Tracy was in the works, Madonna ensured their relationship would be forever imprinted on the consciousness of her fans. She got Beatty to agree to appear in her documentary film, Truth or Dare, commenting mostly about Madonna's love affair, with the camera, that is. When Warren said that Madonna exists almost purely for the camera, he was offering up what many believe to be the truest statement in the entire film. In Truth or Dare, fans of Madonna got a good idea what it's like to date a multimedia goddess. Oddly enough, for a man known for having women throw themselves at his feet, Beatty appeared to be the follower, not the leader. And by the time the gala premiere for Dick Tracy rolled around, Warren was there with bells on, while Madonna was nowhere in sight. Although Madonna loves to be in the spotlight, it's all too clear that she's a little picky about who's at the controls. She wants the last word on her publicity, and that makes her a ripe target for an established media that's used to making and breaking stars. The footage you're seeing here has never been released publicly until now. It was taped by a cameraman hoping to get a closer shot of Madonna, and it'll give you a pretty good idea just how much control the media goddess has over her own image. I didn't touch you. You grabbed me first. Remember that? No, no. He had my arm. No. No, he knows. He knows. Gentlemen. What? Let, let. Just wait. Just wait. Gentlemen. Madonna's aversion to any publicity that isn't generated by herself is legendary. In public exposure as well as in her artistic pursuits, Madonna wants to be at the helm. I know it's true, but part of the uh, mother uh, maternal role is, is, is also a control role, you know. You, you, you have to give her her respect for being able to control everything that's going on around her with regard to her career situation. But there was one publicity situation in the 1980s that left Madonna completely out of control, and that was her marriage to actor Sean Penn. Madonna and Penn developed a reputation for having one of the rockiest marriages in Hollywood history. While Madonna craved the limelight, husband Sean abhorred it. And when paparazzi surrounded the pair like hungry vultures, Sean often lashed out literally. A number of photographers complained that Penn physically attacked them while Madonna stood by, desperately trying to stop the commotion. On one occasion, Penn was given a brief jail sentence for his behavior. It's the finest department I've ever been arrested by. <laughs> Penn's pugilistic nature humiliated Madonna. But as long as he was in there swinging, there was little she could do but grin and bear the horrendous publicity. After only a few years of marriage, the couple called it quits in January of 1989. Sean's reputed jealousy, coupled with Madonna's love of attention, was speculated to be the powder keg that drove these two passionate performers apart. Whatever the reason, Madonna cited irreconcilable differences in the divorce papers that she served on Sean. One lesson Madonna learned from the whole Sean Penn debacle was never to allow anyone else to be in control of her life. Permitting anyone but herself to call the shots is abhorrent to Madonna, and she insists on complete control whenever she can get away with it. And that attitude even extends to controlling her employees' offstage behavior. 
One of her show dancers, nicknamed Slam, let this cat out of the bag while guesting on the Joan Rivers TV show. We, the last thing we did was the MTV Awards, mm -hmm. and then they did this movie, and that's it, working with her, yeah. Why I, is that it? I mean, there's no more... Because she's gonna do a lot of movies, acting, and... So she broke it up? Yeah. Yeah, she, I mean, she stopped do, the tour. I want to do my own material yeah. anyway. Did you have to, when you... Because uh, we were just out here, you know, talking about gossip. Did you have to sign any kind of release saying, when you went to work for I won't talk about it, or I won't talk about it, because on the mm -hmm. tour? So why are you here? <laughs> Comedian and talk show host Joan Rivers has made a career of cutting up famous personalities, and Madonna is no exception. Like it or not, Madonna has been the butt of Joan's humor on more than one occasion. I want you to take a look at a video that I did six months before Madonna came out with her voguing video, and then you tell me why I should not sue that bitch for what I wish. <laughs> While Joan Rivers obviously doesn't have Madonna on a pedestal, there are many others who do. In fact, Madonna's literally on a pedestal at Madame Tussauds Rock Circus Wax Museum in London. This Piccadilly Circus attraction features pop stars, past and present, in various phases of their careers. Their wax figure of Madonna is no dummy when it comes to drawing in patrons. This life-sized, lifelike wax tribute to blonde ambition is one of Madame Tussauds' most recent creations. In England, it's considered an honor to be immortalized in wax at Madame Tussauds. And for a price of what amounts to a few American dollars, this is as close to Madonna as most of her European fans will get. Madonna may always want to control the use of her likeness, but that isn't always possible. Madonna's image packs a powerful wallop, and nowhere is that more evident than in a Madonna impersonator contest. This bar in Madonna's hometown of Detroit recently held a Madonna dance-alike contest. Hundreds of eager patrons packed the place, many cherishing the notion that the queen herself, the real Madonna, might make a surprise appearance. That never happened, but in the meantime, Madonna fans had to make do with a motley collection of would-be goddesses, most of whom weren't even girls, in place of the real thing. If nothing else, the paparazzi had a field day, and Us Magazine covered the event as if the diva herself was on hand. When it comes right down to it, for as much of a publicity monger as she is, Madonna really cherishes her privacy. That's why she never takes her constitutional jog around Central Park, unless she's accompanied by a man of pretty sizable stature. That's why she makes the people around her sign agreements not to discuss her offstage life. Even Madonna's brother, who isn't on her payroll, knows he might be asking for trouble whenever he goes public about his famous sister. She might probably get pissed off from me for doing this because it's not authorized. But I gotta do what I gotta do to get the job done. Getting the job done is exactly what Madonna has on her mind when she's shooting a movie. And that's when she wants privacy more than ever. For instance, on her feature film Body of Evidence, which was shot on location in Portland, Oregon, Madonna ensconced herself in a private townhouse in the city's fashionable riverfront district, rather than staying at a hotel. She came and went just about everywhere via limousine. And she even brought her own limo driver from Los Angeles to do the honors. When she wasn't working, she was usually quietly tucked away in her trailer. And when she was on the job, she went to and from work surrounded by a literal entourage. Her co-star, Willem Dafoe, went solo. Madonna's fans clamored for a glimpse of the goddess. Willem Dafoe went about his business unmolested. Local Portlanders couldn't stay away from the action, doing just about anything to get a look at Madonna. The queen obliged on more than one occasion, as long as the masses kept their distance. Madonna even said she tried to get out and see the town a little, because the last time she was in Portland, she had little time for sightseeing. I sort of just saw my hotel and the venue that I played in, so now hopefully I'm gonna get a chance to see more of it. 
This was a far cry from the reaction of the townspeople of Evansville, Indiana, where Madonna had shot her previous feature film, A League of Their Own. Madonna had made a remark to the press that was interpreted to mean that she thought the city of Evansville was rather boring. As a result, a rally was held in which hundreds of locals staged a protest. And even though Madonna usually reacts to such publicity as though she doesn't give a damn what people think, she later explained how she felt her comments had been misinterpreted. I said that I felt, um, um, isolated. Indeed, many of the people who actually worked on the Evansville shoot found Madonna to be the epitome of graciousness. She was nice. I mean, she was a little bit distant, but I'm thinking that's pretty normal considering she probably meets uh, however many people she meets in her life. She meets a lot of people, and uh, she was just, she was nice. I mean, some of the other people were a little bit more stuck up, a little bit more uh, to themselves, and she was a little more open. She was a little bit happier, she seemed like, uh, speaking with the people, being around the people, and I guess that's, that's Madonna, too. She likes the fact that everybody, uh, you know, adores her, I guess. It seems like no matter what kind of public mischief Madonna gets involved in, her fans only see her best side. Coming up next, we're going to examine the wild and often wacky world of Madonna fans, fanatics, if you will, when we continue with Madonna, the name of the game.